Today, I'm playing the rest of Jalen Milrow's college career and not stopping until he makes the NFL. To begin his sophomore year, he got benched, but ever since he took the starting job back, Alabama's won 10 straight games, and now they're in the playoffs as a four seed. That's where I'll begin playing his career, and my goal is to complete all six of these challenges with him before he gets drafted, but like always, if I fail even just one of those, I'll be giving away a jersey to a random commenter, and it should be a great time playing with somebody as fast as him that also has a stronger arm. Our first game is in the semifinals versus undefeated Michigan, but if we can win this, he'd have a spot in the national championship and one of the challenges is rush for over 150 yards in a game but I'm not going to try it in this one at least for now my only focus is going to be trying to take down the Wolverines he's going to take this handoff for a few but now we must pick up this third and three where we're going with a halfback screen and that was locked up by the time there's a few minutes left in the half we are trailing to the Wolverines but we can still move down the field and score a touchdown to take the lead so that's what we're going to try to do as of now Jalen Milrow seven for seven now he's going to be eight for eight finding hail for a big game and Nick Saban's trying to mix in as many quarterback runs as possible because he is quick like that, juking out there. And I'm sure Michigan will eventually catch on to what we're doing, but at least for now, we're getting another first down. Time is ticking down here in the second quarter, and he's not going anywhere. So if we're going to reach the end zone, we probably need to throw the ball, but he's going to step up in the pocket instead and take it in. That was exactly how I wanted to end that first half. And now here in the third quarter, Prentice is not going to get the first. So that's a rough offensive drive for us. But the Alabama defense forced a huge interception, so Jalen Milrow has it on the Michigan side of the field. And we're looking to take a two-possession lead on the Wolverines here on the speed option they swarm to the ball though which means to reach the end zone we're probably going to have to pass and this is going to be a very tight window but it's intercepted i don't know how the michigan db was able to pull this off but he intercepted it through our wide receiver's body and all jalen Milro can do is watch the michigan offense drive down the field jj mccarthy's gotten his offense very close to scoring the go-ahead touchdown where that was almost picked and if they're able to get in they're going to be up by three points where he is going to run and stiff arm our defender it's been a defensive battle like it was expected to be but now jalen Milro has to clutch up and because of some drops it hasn't been the easiest to get this far down the field but we're still driving Jalen Milrose fitting it into that tight window and I trust that he can get this team at least in the field goal range so we could send the game to overtime but he wants to go for the wind and Isaiah Bond needs to hold on to this football that is another first down for the Crimson Tide now Jalen Milrose is going to evade out of the pocket he's avoiding the sack there and now he's going to spin for the first but Alabama has not reached the end zone yet and this drag isn't going to get him there we can try to run it with Jace McClellan but that got blown up so this third and four all comes down to what Jalen Milrow can do he sensed the pressure early and he's going to make his way into the end zone. The sophomore quarterback just clutched up big time and Alabama's going on to the national championship where we could knock off the hardest challenge before he becomes a junior. We'll be facing either Washington or Texas and either way we have to take on a high-powered offense. But to be honest, I thought it was going to be Washington, not Texas. This gives Alabama a chance to get revenge because their only loss this year came to Texas, but the weather for the Natty isn't looking very pretty and it didn't take the Longhorns very long to score, which is also concerning. Jalen Milrow's going to spin for a few, but he's got a lot of work to do if we're going to tie it back up at seven and he's going to try to take this slant to Burton. We might as well try and mix in a wide receiver screen, but that got locked up. And to be honest, this ball should have been intercepted. You don't want your first drive to not result in any points, especially after Texas scored, but Jalen Milrow is going to lose the ball. It slipped out of his hands in the rain and they get it. With fantastic field positioning, Texas just went up 14 to zero. And all we can do is take what the Texas defense gives us, even if it's a flat. But I hate that Nick Saban's calling halfback draws on third down and that worked. Normally they don't, so I was expecting to fall behind by even more points and we've started to make a little bit of progress when it comes to moving down the field and this might be our biggest play yet Jalen Milrow is going to take it all the way to the crib by himself for a 46 yard touchdown run getting us back within seven the issue is once again Texas has scored so they have not had a bad offensive drive on us which is concerning but it's out of Jalen Milrow's control all we can do is try and have success but now we find ourselves in a third and five where Jace McClellan's open underneath but it's not enough for the first and it looks like their next drive is also going to result in points but it's only a field goal it did not take long for this game to feel like a blowout and they're sending in a ton of pressure but I'm determined to try and get points before the end of the first half because we desperately need them and with that huge throw from Jalen Milrow getting into field goal range isn't out of the question he's going to go for the deep post shot here and it's caught by Jermaine Burton who's going to break the tackle and I wish Nick Saban would be more aggressive but even if we can't go for a touchdown we'll take a field goal because that gets this game back within two possessions and we've got the ball to start the third quarter where Jalen Milrow tried to run play action but the Texas defense sniffed it out from the beginning and that is crushing because it makes this a second and 17 where Jalen Milrow doesn't have anywhere to go on this play. So we have to pick up this third and long and if we don't, we're going to have to settle for a field goal. That was put right where it needed to be though. And what a drive this has been from the sophomore to get it back within a possession. However, the Longhorns have had the ball for a while and they're about to score. So I would hope that the Crimson Tide defense can clutch up. But even if they do, we're going to be trailing by two possessions and CJ Baxter just fought his way in. Coming back down by 14 with four minutes left isn't going to be very easy. But if we're going to get a national championship, we're going to have to 
to pull it off and Jalen Milrow cannot make a play on this one. On second and 10, it seems like the offensive line's doing a better job on this one, but nobody could beat the man coverage, so we had to roll out to find Bond, who eventually would break free. And obviously, Milrow's not ready for the NFL yet, but he has proven that next year, if he has a good year, he could be a top five pick, and that's another good one. No matter what happens in this game, next season's gonna be awesome. But I would love if Milrow could get one natty now, and he is gonna try to hit his slant to Burton, who's gonna go to the two. I think it's gonna come down to the Alabama defense, who struggled to get a stop. And if they pick up this third and one, it is all over, but they don't. There is one final chance for the Alabama offense with no timeouts and about a minute 40 left on the clock. That's a good throw. And getting out of bounds is a massive deal. Now on second and inches, Jalen Milrow is just going to run it up the middle, which should take us to about midfield, but he fumbles the football. He should have slid. Texas is going to pick it up, and that is going to be game. What on earth, man? In this situation, he's going for all of the glory, but he has got to be smarter because now the Longhorns are national champions, and instead of us lifting up this trophy, it's Texas. Going into his junior year, we still have to do all six of these things, and it's going to be difficult because Alabama's losing a ton of talent, but Tennessee's former head coach, Josh Hupel, has come in to help Jalen Milrow develop, and with him as the Crimson Tide's new offensive coordinator, he shot up to a 95 overall with 93 throw power and throw accuracy, so even though the SEC just got much harder adding Oklahoma and Texas, I think Milrow set up nicely to have an amazing junior year. Even though Alabama lost to Texas in the championship, we've leapfrogged them at the preseason number one spot, and Jalen Milrow's one of the five players on the Heisman watch, while also being on the team projected to win the SEC, which is by far the toughest conference in football, but we have to open up the season playing the Longhorns. Just like in the championship, it's dumping rain, but this year Jalen Milrow can hopefully slide, and the last two losses he's taken in his college career have come to Texas, but hopefully the third time he's facing off against them, he doesn't run into as many issues, and we're going to try to scramble a lot. One of the challenges is to rush for 150 yards, and that one's going to be difficult to do, but if we can avoid taking sacks and also break off one or two big runs. We could be there in no time. We are going to try to go deep to our tight end on this play, which is probably the wrong decision. That's intercepted. And it's the first one I've thrown with Jalen Milrow. Now he has to make a tackle. But even though the Longhorns would score, it's not the end of the world because it's still very early on in this game. And from that point forward, we would score a couple of touchdowns, but we're still trailing by seven points to end the first half. And Dupree is fighting for a lot of extra yards. If we're going to tie it up on this drive, that's what we're going to need to see out of him. We're going to have somebody open over there on that side of the field. It is Isaiah Bond, and he is going to go for 20. But we still have a decent bit of yardage that we need to pick up before we reach the end zone, and these throws on the run are money. One of the reasons I'm having so much success on offense compared to other games is I can do whatever I want, because Jalen Milrow has a build like Johnny Manziel did back in college. He can run around and make about any play. This one's going to go for a first down. And after ending the first half with a touchdown, we got ball to start the third quarter, where Jalen Milrow's going to try to get us onto the board again with his legs scrambling for a touchdown. And the Alabama defense finally got a stop on Texas, but we just fumbled it back to them, and they picked it up for a touchdown, making it 28 all. Every single time we play against the Longhorns, they're able to force a fumble on Jalen Milrow, but he's making a play here with this one. And we have 14 first downs to the Longhorn six, so we shouldn't be losing in this game. I guess the good thing is no matter what happens, there's a 12-team playoff, so we can lose and still make it this year, and it gives us room for error, but I don't want to lose to Texas for the third time with Jalen Milrow, and I doubt he does either. With time ticking down here in the third quarter, the Texas defense just sent a blitz. He's going to run around it, though, and I think he might as well just scramble instead of trying to throw it. But the second that they start setting contains, that's no longer going to work. And this is a massive fourth and five where Quinn Ewers is just going to go underneath. But we force the fumble back that we definitely deserve. And if we can run out the rest of the clock, that makes up for all of the bad luck that we have had recently. I'm glad to see that Nick Saban has two clock on, but we're still going to have to pick up multiple first downs like this one. And on third and three, Jam Miller is going to get this pitch last second where he makes it to the marker. So we are one first down away from securing our win versus Texas and Jalen Milrow is going to do it. It was a hard fought win where Jalen Milrow finally took down the Longhorns, but he fell short of a 400 yard passing game and a 150 yard rushing game. So it's no surprise that he also didn't win player of the week, but maybe he'll put up some better numbers against my favorite team. And it's going to pain me to attempt to blow them out, but we can't have any mercy. I have a lot of goals that I need to complete with him before he reaches the NFL. And I don't know what it is about this camera angle, but anytime they send a blitz on it, I'm intimidated. This first drive's been going pretty well and Jalen Milrow's going to pick up another first. But even though he's so good at creating deep breakaway plays, he's yet to have any of those in this one. So I'm waiting for those to come, and we have to hope that that man-to-man -man coverage doesn't clamp up, where Kendrick Law didn't really get open there, but we still threw the ball. Sometimes you have to take risks like that, and we got a four verticals play call, but Kentucky guarded it perfectly besides Jam Miller underneath. And I've been able to get a lot of short runs with Jalen Milrow, but we haven't broken off anything large yet. Near the end of the first quarter, he's at 35 rushing yards, which is on pace to get 150 in this game, but he takes a sack, and I tried to get around that defensive lineman, but that's going to be a massive setback to his rushing yard total because 
guys in college, every time you take a sack, it counts as negative rushing yards. If he's completing passes like that, though, we're going to have nothing to worry about. This is going for another six, and I have a feeling that pretty soon we're going to be blowing out my Wildcats. Nearing the end of the first half, we're going up 21 to zero, and we'd keep that lead for the rest of the game, which is impressive, but stat-wise, we didn't do enough with Jalen Milrow, as even though these are some really nice numbers, they aren't enough to be player of the week. And if we keep winning, I don't see how we'd ever drop from being number one. Our division in the SEC struggling, though, is Georgia's already lost and Florida's the only other undefeated team. So that's a positive, but now we're playing USF. And even though this was close in real life, this next season, I'm hoping things are different. I see this as a perfect opportunity to put up some incredible stats because their defense won't be as good as an SEC schools. But the rain is already causing some early drops, so we have to get this third down, and that's what we do. It might take the entire first quarter, but I think we're going to finally score a touchdown on the Bulls. And their offense is averaging three points a game right now, so they're probably not going to win. We already have more than double of what they normally score. And I'm hoping that this is the matchup that we pass for 400, but we're going to need a lot more big plays like that, where Kobe Prentice just pulled this ball in with one hand. That was an incredible catch from him, and now I'm going to go back to him where they tried to keep up, but that corner didn't turn his head around to the ball, so we're going to score. And I am trying to run up the numbers with Jalen Milrow. We got a four verticals play call from Nick Saban, which normally goes for a lot. Isaiah Bond catches that one. And I'm sure that some of these wide receivers are going to transfer out in real life, but we're going to use them in the game. With how the transfer portal has been, I honestly can't keep up. And Milrow's already passed for over 200 yards in the first half, but maybe we could get even more to end the second quarter. Kendrick Law broke the press on Brown, and if he takes this to the crib, we might be at about 300. There we go. This is the game that Jalen Milrow passes for over 400 yards. And what a first half of football. I actually want USF to stay in it so Nick Saban doesn't pull out Milrow to put in the backups in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a big run from him. But we need passing yards more than anything else, and they went with press man-to-man -man coverage again, but there's a deep safety back there, and he's going to pick it. I've been trying to force stuff throughout the entire third quarter to get to those totals. That's going to go for 20. But sometimes trying to force stuff can be a bad thing, and why am I trying to hit that throwing window? It's simply too risky, and if Jalen Milrow has too many interceptions, he's not going to be able to win the Heisman. But with that touchdown, he's at 379 yards, and Nick Saban's going to want to run the clock out, so this might be our last chance to have a deep passing play where he goes over the middle of the field and it's caught. In the end, it would be a close call, but he did beat his goal, as even though Kendrick Law finished with player of the game, you'll see that Jalen Milrow passed for 413 yards and five touchdowns, which knocks off the first of six challenges in this video. But again, he had no luck when it came to winning player of the week, and right now he's losing out on the Heisman race to Henry Parrish Jr. I could be wrong, but I don't think we've played on the road yet, as we're playing our fourth straight here at Bryant-Denny Stadium, and of all the SEC schools, South Carolina is usually one of the worser ones, so maybe we could rack up 150 rushing yards against them today. I'm going to try to do a lot like rolling out of the pocket, and that's our best chance of picking them up because they stick with Jalen Milrow on the option. If they run man-to-man -man coverage, we should have some deep stuff like this ball over to Law, but I'm also looking for the man-to-man -man coverage because that makes it a lot easier to scramble than when they run zone, but Jalen Milrow can still make something out of nothing. He's got 41 rushing yards alone on this drive, and this is going to be another few, but because he's starting to get tired, we're going to have to resort to passing for the touchdown instead, and on our next drive, we have been blessed with the four verticals play call, but they're setting quarterback contains, which makes it a lot harder to roll out of the pocket, and losing 12 yards there is not good. I should have taken what they were giving me. As you can see, there are so many spies out there. They do not want Jalen Milrow scrambling. And this is exactly why it's going to be so hard to hit that 150 rushing yard total. We have to get this third and 29 though, and that's what we're going to do. You cannot press Isaiah Bond, who goes to the house. And even if we can't get our rushing yard total, I'm not too worried about it because there's plenty of games left. To end the first half, we are looking to go up 28 to 3 on South Carolina. The offensive line didn't hold up the best here, but Jalen Milrow can get out of there, avoiding all of the pressure, and we're going to slide with him. Playing with a quarterback like him is so fun. I am enjoying myself, but that might be an interception, and I'm always due to make a bad read in the end zone. It's not going to affect the result of this game, but it'll probably affect the chances of Jalen Milrow winning the Heisman. He is going to avoid the sack once again, and this is how we're getting our most scrambling yards. We're going to spin, though, and that was almost a fumble, but the issue is because of the sacks that he's taken earlier on, he only has about 80 rushing yards at this point, and I highly doubt he's going to reach 150, especially since they're prepared to stop the run instead of the pass. So what we're going to do is dominate them through the air since they aren't that scared of Jalen Milrow's arm, and that should help us seal another win. We are stuck on a third and 13, but we're going to pick this one up to Prentice. And from here, there's no way that the Gamecocks are able to come back on us, so I'll gladly take our fourth win of the year. And Isaiah Bond won player of the game with these stats, but because of that interception, Jalen Milrow didn't deserve to, even though he rushed for 89 yards. Now he's going to get a much-deserved bye week, and coming out of it, we're playing at Vanderbilt. So this is another game where we could put up 150 rushing yards. I'm going to utilize the same strategy where I just step up in the pocket and then run around with Milrow, but the issue with doing that is it only works a couple of times before they start setting quarterback contains, and we're not getting much out of it. As he fumbles it away to the Commodores, they're picking it up, 
and come on boys. We had an offensive lineman right there that should have picked up the ball, but because he didn't, right now Alabama's losing to Vanderbilt, and now the Commodores have their two quarterback spies out there and quarterback contains. It's good theoretically because it'll make passing the ball much easier, but I want to put up 150 rushing yards versus the Commodores, and right now they only have like one or two people trying to get pressure in on Milrow, who's now going to run out of there and get the first down. To get to 150 rushing yards whenever they're expecting it, it's going to be a grind, but I'm going to give it my best effort, and you know what? If they're going to have two contains out there and two spies, we might as well float it over the middle of the field to Isaiah Bond, who's going to take this one to about the 10-yard line. It was really hard to tell there at the end, but Jalen Milrow's pretty tired, so I'm surprised he didn't fumble, and we've got to make it in on this third and goal, but he's not going to. Nick Saban's decided that we're just getting a field goal, and I never thought that we'd be struggling with the Commodores, but that's our reality right now, and on this one, they went with some man coverage, so I'm going to try to escape the pocket. They had someone over there, though, and I'm so worried about trying to get to 150 rushing yards. I missed three wide open wide receivers. It is more important that we don't lose than completing that challenge, so I'm going to continue to see if they give us the look that I'm looking for, and Jalen Milrow's going to try to beat their defense over the top, which he is able to do. To be honest, whenever we're throwing it, it's not that hard to score touchdowns, and after our defense got an interception, we're about to go up by three. With about 40 seconds left in the half, we have an opportunity to get more points as well, and we're going to run the Shags concept on them. I'm not sure what type of coverage that is on Ja'Cory Brooks, but he's naked, and we're going to hit him for a tutty. You all can see that the second we just started slinging it, we were starting to have a lot more success. They're no longer putting quarterback contains out there because of that, and Jalen Moro gets a big run. So maybe that's what we have to do. Throw the ball until they stop putting quarterback contains out there and then scramble. Obviously, he is a little tired, so we're going to need to throw on this down, and I don't think that safety is going to get over to the ball. We have a wide open Isaiah Bond again, and all of our receivers have gotten so much better. But that's one of the first times quarterback sneak hasn't worked, and we just got it back on the next play. It looks like they tried to send a blitz over on this left hand side, Jalen Milrow stumbled, and what could have been a huge run from him was messed up because he tripped over his own feet. That is devastating because now they have contains out there again, which means we have to go back to passing. But I am determined to get these 150 rushing yards, so eventually we'll do it. We have to get some blocks here from the right people, which we're able to do. And right now he is at 93 rushing yards. They're sniffing out the read option though, where he still juked multiple players out and that's more space. He needs to have a big fourth quarter on the ground, but if he's given an opportunity, I trust he can do it. And they're just waiting for him to hand it off, but now he's going to take this one for another 10. He's at 120 rushing yards right now, which puts him very close, and that should have been a touchdown, but maybe we just needed to be blessed with more rushing yards from Milrow, and that's probably five or six more. We need to get into the end zone here, though, to make it a three-possession lead, and we do, but with a minute 16 left, we're still 23 away, and Nick Saban wants us to just run out the rest of the clock, but we have audible to a pass where Jalen Milrow gets past the 40, and this challenge is going to come down to the wire because we're not going anywhere. It is now third and one, and my plan is to simply roll out and take the first down. There's a lot of players over on that part of the field, though, and we fumble it back to Vanderbilt. So we are very fortunate that even though I thought they picked up the ball, our linemen did. And I don't know how much more we need, but we are getting so close to 150. Come on, Milrow. I think that was just enough to do it as we have 155. So one of the hardest challenges I've ever had to do has been completed. And I don't think we're going to come close to touching that the rest of the year. Player of the week seems to be a hard award to come by as well, but I'm confident we'll eventually get that if we can have zero turnovers. And that's got to start happening soon if Jalen Milrow is going to win the Heisman. But next up on our schedule is Georgia, and they've already lost two games. They had a really rough start to the year, but now they're bouncing back, and it stinks that we have to play on the road, but we've already played a bulk majority of our home games, so we'll see how we do in this one. On this third and five, we're going to pick it up to Prentice, and it's nice that we don't have to worry about forcing the ball to try to put up any certain stats. Milrow can now make a ton of great plays, and hopefully this is the week that we win player of the week. He doesn't have enough time in the pocket back there, though. He is going to avoid the sack, and this is actually going to go for a first. I'm having a ton of fun playing with somebody like him. We should be able to laser this up the middle, and our defense has already gotten one stop on the Bulldogs. They went with man-to-man -man coverage here, which makes it super easy for us to scramble with Milrow. And I was afraid that we'd struggle versus Georgia because they're really good, but we're going for the deep shot, number six versus number six, and we come away with it. Our defense would then force a fumble, so we're about to go up by three possessions, assuming that we don't get sacked here, and Jalen Milrow's just too quick. This has been such an amazing start. I cannot believe how well we are performing right now, but I'm expecting something terribly wrong to not go our way in a little bit, and it just hasn't happened yet. Isaiah Bond gets that one, and I guess Milrow is going to continue to rack up the stats versus the Bulldogs as he's going to break that sack there, which takes us to the end of the first quarter. Here on second and five to open that up, we have somebody in the back of the end zone, and Georgia would finally score, but I'm afraid it's too late as we keep racking up touchdowns. To end the first half, we could get another, and we might have had that seam up the middle, but I was afraid of throwing an interception there. We're going to fumble it, and I hope that turnover doesn't ruin our chance at winning player of the week because he deserves it. On third and goal here in the third quarter, we might have had that corner route, but again, I don't want to force something that might not be there, and this is probably the last drive Milrow will play before he gets 
subbed out. He's breaking that sack, but that pressure was too much, making this a third and 20 where we might be able to pick this up to Prentice and he comes away with the football. We need to get one more touchdown with Jalen Milrow to finish off what's been an incredible game and that is going to do it. That was by far his best performance yet, going for seven total touchdowns. And of course, he's finally one player of the week, which means we've now completed half of the video's challenges. And right now he is on pace to win the Heisman. So we just have to keep up this high level of play, but it's going to be hard when we have to travel to Kyle Field. So our defense forcing an interception on their first drive is a massive deal. They've put us in a position to start out having success as Jalen Milrow keeps that one, but the Texas A&M defense swarmed to stop him. And on this second and goal, he is going to have to escape the pocket. We got a couple of good blocks. I don't know if he's quick enough to get the edge, but he's going to make it. What an incredible drive from him. And the Aggies have scored, but we will see what Nick Saban's drawn up. We're just going to go to our running back on second and two. And Jam Miller not getting, that's a little disappointing, but we will pick up the third down. So the drive stays alive and the Aggies don't know what to do to stop us. Right now we are in our groove, which is what makes it so difficult. Prentice is coming away with this ball for the touchdown. And Kobe Prentice has been one of the best receivers in the country. As after that play, he'd end up catching another touchdown. So we might as well try to get him a third, but Texas A&M was all over it. We're very lucky that Jalen Milrow didn't throw an interception in that situation. They have left this right side of the field open for him to scramble. And I don't think he'll reach the end zone, but it sets up a first and goal where Kendrick Law gets open. And every time our defense forces a turnover, they put us in a great position. It's kind of crazy that after our slow start, we are running it up versus the number 11 team in the country. And our offense has found their groove because things could not be going better. But to continue our domination versus Texas A&M, we need to finish this drive off. And on third and five, I think we're going to have our tight end on the streak where he's going to hold on. What's great is because Texas A&M got another touchdown, we're going to have the ball again. And Nick Saban hasn't pulled Jalen Milrow yet, so he can continue to try and run up the stats. But we have to make sure that we don't turn the ball over and that corner route's getting wide open. We have been putting on a clinic with him recently as that's going to be another tutty and Texas A&M would score again. So guess who's still out there with a few minutes remaining? Nick Saban's just making us run out the rest of the clock, but it could lead to even more points for this offense. And on third and three, everybody bit at the read option besides this one defender who we juked out with Milrow. So I think that taking his ankles is a great way to end this game. Right now, we have got to be the favorites to win it all because Milrow just went for another seven touchdowns. So I'm not surprised that we jumped Kansas in the rankings and they just had a crazy overtime win versus Oklahoma. Right now, we're actually not winning our division in the SEC though. But before we can play Florida, we have a few other schools to take on and Tennessee is one of the worst offenses in the country. So I'm not worried going into this one, especially since we've been creaming teams on the road. Now this jersey combination is atrocious, but I'm sure we're still going to make it work out. And I don't know why neither of our teams are wearing white, but I guess it's all right. It might make it a little bit harder to make the right read, but we can always scramble instead of passing if needed. And I need to remember to slide, but I'm still not going to do it here. I don't know why, but I just couldn't get myself to hit that button. So it's a good thing we didn't fumble. Jam Miller's going to get like nine. So this first drive is going pretty well. I'm going to try to make a throw on the run with Jalen Morrow here. I know a route that's going to bounce perfectly, but I should have set my feet because that's picked. And now we're losing to the volunteers here in Nayland Stadium where they're about to get a sack. And this is why we can never be complacent. We just bowled out versus two top 25 teams, but we're struggling versus two and six Tennessee. And I'm going to try to hit Jam Miller on this wheel route. If it gets open later on in the play, we're going to bomb the Tennessee defense. And that's a great catch. And that should allow us to tie it back up at seven to end the first quarter with this run. And of course, the Alabama defense is starting to lock up. I'm going to try to hit this route over to Prentice for a big game. And I love how much the read options getting cold, but Tennessee's been all over it. Somehow we spun them out there, but that's going for a loss of yards. And I'm hoping that inside post on the middle gets open over the middle of the field, but Jalen Milrow's trying to scramble. And I think we're going to be stuck getting a field goal. Well, Nick Saban's forcing us to go for it on fourth and 20. This is going to have to be a perfectly placed ball, which it is. And it is Kobe Prentice coming down with it on the other end. That is a Heisman level play where Jalen Milrow is so good. And I feel like while controlling him, I can do pretty much anything that I need to. What's crazy is he could also come out and play like this next year. He had a good end to his season. He's going to pick up maybe a first down here. He's spinning out guys. I need to be sliding, but I feel like we should always be going for the extra yardage if we're able to get it. And he's like using a running back and a quarterback all mixed into one. We've now put up 21 straight on the volunteers and we're about to get even more here in the third quarter. So even though I was worried at one point, I don't think we have to be anymore. They did get a blitzer in on this play and that's an interception. I should have just run it into the end zone. What was I thinking? This is the high level gameplay that you watch this channel for. And you know what? I need to make sure that I don't get any more interceptions with Jalen Milrow this year or he might not win the Heisman. We should probably slide, but I'm having so much fun just doing whatever with him. It really doesn't matter. We're going to run for another big gain here because I see two players that could get us some nice blocks. Of course, no sliding. And I hope the defense focuses 
in on Jam Miller so we can keep it where he's going to do a back juke and make his way to the end zone. However, that Tennessee defense was real stiff down on the goal line, so we're going to have to sneak it in for two inches. And on the final play of the third quarter, I'm just going to run around with Jalen Milrow and wait for our lucky route bounce where we're now going to find wide open Isaiah Bond for 25. All of a sudden, we're just dominating, and I'm not going to let those two interceptions ruin what's going to be a really good game besides them. We've been able to rush all over the volunteers, carving them up, and that is another running touchdown from Jalen Milrow. That was the last time he'd see the field in this game, but it wouldn't matter because his stats were incredible, and I feel like I've thrown a lot of picks, but it's only been seven so far, so that's why we're still chilling at the top of the Heisman watch, but I've got to start cutting down on them because averaging one a game is really rough, and against the Hilltoppers, we shouldn't throw any. This is a nice break from SEC play since we have faced some bigger schools recently. Jam Miller doesn't want to go down, and I don't like facing off against schools in the rain, but we're going to cook their man coverage, so let's just hope that we pick up this third and one where the inverted veer is going to work to perfection. I'd like to think that we've already scored like 40 touchdowns with Milrow this year, and this season might outdo what Joe Burrow did in 2019, but Western Kentucky just stopped us, so it's a good thing that their offense is doing nothing as we forced a turnover on them, and we've been running the ball very well recently, especially with all of these option plays, so I think we're prepared for the playoffs as long as we don't have to play a team like Texas, because we all know that they'll give us an issue. We couldn't reach the end zone then the first quarter, but we should do it here, and they always bite on the running back. Of course, through Sim, we throw an interception, and that's like the third time it's happened this year, but we're gonna roll around with Milrow and make up for it on this play if he did not run into his own player. And I wanna try and go deep to Isaiah Bond where we get the throw off, he beat the man coverage, and that's a tutty. Western Kentucky's offense would finally score, but we're still up by two possessions, and I wish we'd go for it on fourth and two, but we had to wait to get the ball back where I just realized that this is one of our worst games recently. Jalen Milrow's gonna run for a first, but we've been putting up even better numbers against schools that are far greater than the Hilltoppers, and I don't understand that. Milrow did break free on this one, though, and we need to swerve to reach the end zone, and that is exactly why he deserves the Heisman Trophy. At this rate, he might put up better numbers on the ground than most of the running backs in the country. He has the speed to outrun that guy, but unfortunately for him, it led to him getting leveled, and I think we should go back to passing where we could have gone for the seam up the middle, but they went with man-to-man -man coverage. He is tired. He should not have escaped that, and now we're going to our running back for six. I had a good time running up the score versus the Hilltoppers, but that one interception really bugs me because I've seen too many of them cause players to lose the Heisman. Our next matchup is versus 2-8 and eight Wisconsin, so even though it's on the road, it shouldn't be much of an issue, and I'm not expecting their offense to score much on us on this first read option. Jalen Milrow's gonna fake out two players, but if we wanna score quick, we should probably mix in some deep shots like this, and they have gotten us to a third and 11, but they're not gonna stop that curl route to Kendrick Law, so I'm annoyed that he ran backwards there, because now we have to get this fourth and three, and we're not going to. It's just like the Tennessee game, where we find ourselves down by early, but they sent a blitz and our lineman picked it up. Jalen Milrow also just got out of there. He needs to juke one player, but he couldn't get by him, and he's still happy about it. I was expecting his longest rushing touchdown ever, but instead we're just gonna have to take stuff like the drag on this play. And I try to cut out most of the runs, but we're handing this one off to Jam Miller, but it didn't lead to the first, so we have to pick up this third and two, and that's what we're gonna do here. The final play of the first quarter could be a touchdown as Kobe Prentice is wide open, and now that our defense is getting stops again, we have the ball back tied up at seven, where Jam Miller held onto that ball for the first down, and now we're going back to Kobe Prentice. So I am ready to take a lead on the Badgers, but we still have a decent bit of work that we have to do, and Jalen Milrow is gonna break this one to the house. I have to say, I am impressed that Wisconsin's still in this game. They got a field goal on their last drive. Jalen Milrow is gonna escape the pocket on this one, though, and he didn't slide, which caused the fumble. So you have to wonder when I'm gonna learn, because we are losing 17-14, to 14, and this could be a deep play, but the Badgers got in on us. So it is now third down, where we're gonna roll out and throw for what should have been a first. But Kendrick Law came back to the football again, and Wisconsin would score to start the third quarter, so all of a sudden we're down by 10, which is not good, especially since Nick Saban is calling counter runs on second down. He needs to keep the ball in Jalen Milrow's hands, which is gonna lead to a touchdown. And thank goodness our defense got a stop on that next drive because we needed to get the ball back. Jalen Milrow's gonna escape the pocket on this one. None of those defensive linemen were keeping up. And I know you all saw that slide on that play because we needed to do it in that situation. We've already had one breakaway touchdown off of the option run. Jalen Milrow's gonna escape it there and I'm gonna pitch it backwards, but he didn't even get the ball off. So he's gonna get credit for all nine of those yards and we're continuing this drive down the field. They don't have anybody in a quarterback spy and I can't believe how long it took me to get 150 rushing yards in a game with him because we have not struggled to run the ball since. We are getting closer and closer to reaching the end zone where he's gonna keep this one, but I should have slid because he is way too tired right now. So we have to hand this one off to Jam Miller who gets the first and that sets up an easy one for us to punch in. All it took was one clutch interception from our defense and we have the ball back again. There's a lot of open space on this right side of the field that Jalen Milrow is gonna take 
take advantage of. And right now he has like 190 rushing yards on the Badgers. And it's about time that they started focusing on stopping him, but they're not going to here. So you can see the disappointment across the stadium as Milrow is about to get another touchdown. Wisconsin played really well against us, but they have struggled to put up points in the fourth quarter. This is going to be another first down for Jalen Milrow. And we can stat pad a little bit more as we try to run out the rest of the clock against the Badgers. But we're risking pulling a Miami in the process and this one's not going anywhere. I have no idea how they could be taunting him now, but that's enough to frustrate me to want to get one more touchdown just to rub it in and he's going to try to scramble for it, but he fumbles it away to the Badgers. So even when he doesn't throw picks, he turns it over and he rushed for 223 yards. Because of that, he's won his second player of the week. And now it's time for the Florida game where they're also 10 and 0. So this should be interesting. Kansas and Penn State are still undefeated too. And if we lose this game, we might not get a first round bye in the playoffs. So it is critical that we win. And thankfully it's at home. Our defense already forced to stop on the Gators and now we're hitting them with the play action. But before we could get that bomb off, they were already on Jalen Milrow's butt. And on third and 17, we're going to roll out and hope that one of these four verticals can get open, which it does to Kendrick Law. On our next third down, Nick Saban's called a halfback slip screen where Richard Young is not going to make it. And I hate that we had to punt, but we're going to get the ball back in about the same position. And what is this? Jalen Milrow is going to get positive gains. But those were some of the weirdest spin moves I've ever seen. And how did they get that pressure? There is a reason that Florida is still undefeated at this point. They just locked up that corner route. Jalen Milrow is going to have to scramble for the first himself if he's able to make it. And he does. By the way, in case you were wondering, I was pounding the slide button in that situation. And that's a nice play to end the first quarter. But we have got to finish this drive off. And I was about to take that slant, but he stopped mid route. Now we're going to fumble it away. It's picked up by them. And for somebody that could be a running back, Jalen Milrow fumbles the ball a ton. They have a quarterback spy that we're going to have to beat out. And that's what we're going to do. He saw all of the open space on the field. We're going down and it might take us all half to score a touchdown, but we know that it's coming at some point. And how are they getting so much pressure in on us? I feel like I've been running for my life with him. This inverted run is going to go for another first down plus more though. He's going to take this one to the crib. And that is a house call for our Heisman quarterback. I love that Florida's offense is still struggling. And this is where we take our deep shot that we have yet to have in a bit. This is going to Isaiah Bond. And it might surprise you, but at this point in the game, Jalen Milrow six for six, now seven for seven. So he's playing pretty well. And if we're lucky, we will end the first half with another touchdown, but they brought the heat. So it's going to be hard to score. And whatever we do, we can knock it tackled in bounds. So we're going to have to hope that Kendrick Law picks up the first. And time is winding down so quick. We're going to have to take this wheel route over to Miller. He's going to go to the first down marker, but time's going to run out before we have a chance to spike it. And we'll just have to open up the third quarter with a touchdown instead, but they're getting in pressure still. Our left tackle has been struggling. I've watched it come in from that side all day. We're going to just go right for it now. Jalen Milrow is going to have to outrun this linebacker and he does. He has so much speed. And after using somebody like him, when I go back to film Grand Rapids, I'm going to have a hard time moving the football. It's going to be hard to adjust to using somebody that can't do all the things he can. And the Gators would finally score. But as long as we keep moving the ball like this, I think we're going to have a win in our bag. That's a dot. And the Crimson Tides defense forced a fumble, which puts us inside the Gators red zone where we're going to run around with Milrow and throw for another one. He didn't even get to see the field in the fourth quarter, but he ruined the day for a lot of Florida fans. And we just crushed the number three team in the country. If anybody were to beat us though, it would probably be our rivals because it's on the road and the Iron Bowl is always a tough one. So it's important that we start this game out right, scoring on our first drive. And Nick Saban wants to hit him with a little bit of play action where Kendrick Law is wide open over the middle of the field. So that was a good idea from the GOAT, but we still have a lot of work to do if we're going to reach the end zone. And I love the idea of trying to beat them deep on third and five. So that's what we're going to do over to Kendrick Law. But I don't know if he got a foot in, so we're going to hurry it up and take our corner route, which resulted in a touchdown because he just bumped into the pylon. And Auburn would not score. Now we have to pick up this third and two where Richard Young is going to hold on. And I am just going to enjoy running the ball with Jalen Milrow. I need to get a couple of blocks and he could house this. But maybe that was too optimistic. So we're going to run around with him on this one and just go for a big gain instead here. We're going to juke to the outside, then slide. But I'm never quick enough to get it off. And I feel bad for any team that has to face us the rest of the season. I've never been more confident than right now in my ability to win with a team. But that's the first throw Milrow's missed in a long time. And Nick Saban wants to go for it on fourth and seven where we don't have anybody open until later. And by the time we were able to set our feet with Jalen Milrow, Auburn's defense was all over it. They'd go on to score from there. So this is exactly what I was worried about going into this one. And on third and four, it looks like they might be bringing a blitz. I knew it was coming. Jalen Milrow is going to escape just in time. And if we get those two blocks, he is going to take this one to the crib. What a run from him. He is too quick for 25 to catch him. And I think that is his longest touchdown run ever. If you were curious, it was a nice 69 yards to be exact. And now we're going with the deep shot, but that was the wrong read. And even though it would lead to Auburn tying it up at 14, we're not going to talk about that because recently we have been playing very well with Milrow.
out. So we just got to keep it pushing with 36 seconds left in the half. And I'm going to wait for Kendrick Law to get open over the middle of the field, going for another 25 yards. As this extremely quick drive down the field continues. And on this one, I didn't want to make any risky reads. So we're just going to run around with Milrow for the first and then call a timeout with Nick Saban, which sets up an opportunity for an easy touchdown on that hitch. The Tigers might have seen that coming, but I doubt they're going to expect the run. And I don't understand why they have to play us so well, but we are not going to pick this up. We've got to throw this away and just watch as we only go up by three. It is always going to be tough to win in the Iron Bowl. And the Tigers begin the third quarter by tying it up all at 17. Jalen Milrow is going to juke to the outside on this run though. And if he is able to avoid both of those tackles, he's about to have another huge run. This is his best game in a long time because he just rushed for another 74-yard tutty and he already has over 200 rushing yards. Now we're trying to thread the needle. Okay, that is not an interception that should have happened. We have to make a tackle now. Don't tell me Speaks is about to take this one to the house. And that is what I get for trying to thread the needle and being too confident. It's no longer his best performance in the wild, even though he's dominating on the ground and doing decent through the air. But if they're going to keep bringing the heat, we can handle that and he's going to escape the pocket on this one, which should go for another big run. That is at least 10 or 15. And with 200 112 total rushing yards on the day. He is destroying this defense. They should have more than one quarterback spy out there. That'll take us to the end of the third quarter. And I want to thread the needle to our tight end if that linebacker doesn't play it, but I couldn't risk making that throw. And that's going to be a costly sack. Odds are we're not going to pick this up from the second and 24 marker unless Milrow has enough speed to get around these guys and he's tired. So all we can do is hope for the best on third and 14. And that crossing route is not going to be open. It was a bad throw from him and it was inaccurate. So I thought it was about to be intercepted. But what's important is our defense stops Auburn on this third and 11 where Peyton Thorne has all of the time in the world. He's going to throw it and it's intercepted. That is what we love to see. It is time for us to try and run out the clock to get the win. But this third and five is not a freebie and they're going to get somebody in on Jalen Milrow. So the fact that he got out of there is insane. In the end, we were able to run out the rest of the clock on the Tigers getting the win, but it was much closer than I would have liked it to be. And that's with Jalen Milrow rushing for almost 250 yards. I also have to mention that we just completed the beating Auburn challenge. And here in the SEC championship, we're taking on none other than Oklahoma. If we can play well in this game and limit turnovers, we should win the Heisman. But they're fighting for one of the last playoff spots. And after the Iron Bowl, I'm no longer feeling as confident. I had a couple of turnovers that we should have never thrown. So it is time to lock in and try to finish Jalen Milrow's career in the best way possible. We need to win the SEC championship. Because even though he's already done that, I want to go into the playoffs as the number one seed as an undefeated team as well. Jam Miller's taking this one for 20. And that was a perfect last second pitch. Now we're going to run around and try to throw it to the end zone, but it's swatted down. So maybe we should try to keep it on the ground instead. That's what worked against the Tigers. And this is at least a first. I've gotten really good at running up the rushing totals with Jalen Milrow. So we honestly might have more rushing touchdowns than some of the Heisman candidates that are running backs. Richard Young is not going to reach the end zone. And that means another touchdown for Milrow. Jackson Arnold in Oklahoma would respond back with one themselves, but it's still very early on. And I absolutely love when we get the five articles play call, but they sent a blitz. So we weren't able to take advantage of it. And I highly doubt that we pick up this third and 21. We're going to need this route to somehow reach it, but we're going to fall one yard short. And our defense got us the ball back pretty quick. On this second and 10, we're going to try to fit this slant into Kobe Prentice. And it's still seven to seven midway through the third quarter. We are going to take this one with Milrow though, and he has broken it free. So that is another rushing touchdown for the Heisman contender. And Oklahoma would only get a field goal on their next drive, giving us a chance to go up by two possessions on this one with Milrow juking out multiple players there. And the only time I can imagine I've used a quarterback that's better than him is whenever you recruit those athletes in dynasty mode that have like 98 speed and 95 throw power. But I'm not sure if any of them make for as good of a running back as he's been. And did he just fumble that away? Are you kidding me? I mean, I have to give them credit. That was a pretty hard hit on him, but that means that we're still only up by four points here in the third quarter and winning this SEC championship is not going to be as easy as I would have liked, but I'm starting to take checkdowns again and locking in so we can score because we can only control Jalen Milrow. And I'm not sure what our defense is going to do. He should be able to scramble for his third touchdown, but he fumbled it into the back of the end zone. These turnovers might cost him the Heisman Trophy. And with a minute left in the third quarter, Oklahoma scored. Now we're going to find Isaiah Bond, but he's going to drop the football. And this is what happens when you get too comfortable. It's a nice wake up before the playoffs. But with a loss, we might lose our first round by. And I don't know what to do here besides just try and take it to Brooks, who isn't going to get the first. We are so lucky that our defense just intercepted Jackson Arnold. Because to be completely honest, we do not deserve to be in this game right now. And there is only three and a half minutes remaining. We're going to pick 
pick up this third and two plus a lot more, but we fumble it again. I needed to slide apparently, but I figured that Isaiah Bond was going to hold the block on that player. And all Jalen Milrow can do is watch the defense from the sidelines where that should have been a safety, but the refs gave them a very generous spot. And I hate to say it, but they're one first down away from beating us. In the next two plays, Jalen Milrow's undefeated junior year could come to an end. And on third and six, Jackson Arnold's going to drop back to throw the ball where they pick up the first down. I cannot believe that we just lost to Oklahoma, but it really is the wake up call that we needed. And I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that Jalen Milrow still won the Heisman by a landslide because aside from the 10 interceptions, these passing stats are great. And he also had 1,400 rushing yards with 20 rushing touchdowns. I am surprised that we didn't have a single 1,000 yard receiver, but I think the worst part about that loss is we're not going to get a first round bye. And it's a good thing that the Sooners are on the other side of the bracket. We're starting out facing off against the Hurricanes who have lost to Rice, Georgia Tech, and Virginia Tech. So I'd be super disappointed if we couldn't take them down. And remember, because we won the Heisman, there's only one challenge left for us to do. But if we don't win a championship this year, Jalen Milrow is not going to complete it because he's definitely declaring for the draft after this season. And I cannot believe that we just picked up that third and long. He isn't going to take his check down there though until later on. I was going to do it early, but Jam Miller still dropped the ball. And we need to see what type of defense they send in our direction this time. It looks like a little bit of a blitz, but we're still going to have Kobe Prentice. So we're all good. We're going to continue to hit him with the play action and they just got in a free rusher. Now Nick Saban wants Jalen Milrow to keep it on the quarterback wrap, but it's unfortunately third and 21 for us. So we don't have a great chance of picking this up, but we still do. The Hurricanes defense did everything that they could and it still wasn't enough. So now that we continue to work it down the field, this has got to result in a touchdown. And my goal in these playoffs is not to have a single turnover with Jalen Milrow, but I know that's a long shot, especially when he gets tired. I'm not sure how we're going to pull that off, but we pick up the third and 14 and it's been a very long drive, but we're about to finish it off with a touchdown. That was exactly what we needed though, because then our defense would get a stop and we have it back again. So we can take a two possession lead early and I'm just going to roll out, find our slant over to Isaiah Bond and that's a touchdown. To be honest with you, I don't think the Hurricanes are going to be able to keep up with our offense. We've already scored twice and we're getting it back again. And I hope that they continue to press us on this first and 10 where we are going for the deep shot, but it looks like it was underthrown and there's the turnover. My goal was to not have any of them, but the Heisman quarterback couldn't hit Kendrick Law in stride and our defense got an interception right back. So Miami wasn't even able to score with that good field positioning. And that lets me know that we should cruise to an easy win here in the first round of the playoffs. We pitched that one to Miller and now they want to focus on him on the read option, which should allow us to pick up the first down. But I'm curious if this quarterback draw works and it's not going to. Here on second and goal, we just need to hit Kendrick Law on the slant, but there was a little bit of PI and the refs want to keep it close, which I understand, but that's not happening. Miami can try to stay in it all they want, but they're not going to keep up with Kendrick Law on this one. And they got their touchdown, but they couldn't even hit the extra point. Now we're just running around with Milrow for fun, seeing what we can do with him and he fumbled the ball. Wonderful. I couldn't even tell who picked it up, but we are lucky it was our team. I was going to take that curl route on the left side of the field, but they were all over it, and this man-to-man -man coverage is starting to stick, but not for long enough on Kobe Prentice. At some point, they're going to have to send a blitz to try and stop us, and what did I say? How did they swat that away? We had so much separation, but Jalen Milrow underthrew another ball, and I don't know why he's starting to struggle near the end of the year. We need him to have more success, and there's another turnover. Miami obviously wouldn't score as we have the ball back here, but I wanted to limit those turnovers. And maybe we can do that in the next round because they've been pretty bad. You know what? I think I'm going to add one more challenge to the list. And if we turn it over one more time, I'm going to have to give away a jersey. The pressure is on for my bank account. And I think we lucked out in getting Boise State here, but we still have to go into this game playing our best because remember, I can't have any more turnovers. And this is going to force me to really lock in with Jalen Milrow where we're already picking up a first down, but we still got over 60 yards to go if we want to reach the end zone. And I probably should slide in this situation. One of these days, I'm going to try to do an entire video where I don't turn it over once in a season, which is going to be very hard, but I want to see if I can pull it off, especially with the type of play style I have on Heisman difficulty. We're going to find Ja'Cory Brooks for like a 20 yard gain here. And this drive has been flawless so far with another seven or eight yard gain. I've yet to go for any tight windows on these passes, which is why we're dumping this one off to our halfback. Jam Miller is going to get the first. And this drive has already taken up over half of the first quarter, but now we're going to score. And Boise State would only get a field goal on us, but they're trying to send a blitz on this play and we're not getting 
anywhere. I have to say the Broncos are playing a lot better than I thought they would. We could have tried to hit the crosser there, but again, I am worried I'm going to throw an interception and that's a rough ending to the first quarter. Third and 14 now. I have a route that I want to try and hit, but that safety might play it. There is a flag on the play, so hopefully this is coming back and we just got bailed out by the ref. They had somebody offside, so the interception never happened and I cannot believe that that safety was able to play that ball the way that he did. It's so much harder when I can't click on to the wide receivers and the Broncos have us on a third and 15 where we might have this comeback route but they got close to playing it so I'm surprised that Nick Saban's letting us be this aggressive but we got to pick it up and we were not able to. I think we got all of our high level of play out early on in the year when we could really use it right now. Jalen Milrow is going to get a bit here but I want the offense back that put up like 50 points against Georgia and Texas A&M. Even though running the ball has been more fun I think we've scored less since we started doing it and that might be the difference maker on this third and one we had to keep it though because I really want this to be the final drive of the first half and we're getting another first down. However, there's only 20 seconds left in the half because I accidentally left true clock on so that could be an issue but Jalen Milrow saw all of the open space and here in the first half he's rushed for 70 yards but that's a touchdown. We ended the first half the right way and Boise State still started the third quarter by scoring another touchdown. They are keeping it extremely close with us. This is risky but instead of sliding we fought for the first down and I can't believe I went into this one expecting it to be a blowout because we are not doing that to them. I've rushed for well over over 100 yards with Jalen Milrow, but we have to pass on this one to Richard Young for the first down. And that was a nice reminder that checkdowns can still get the job done because I admit I love to go for the big chunk plays. And now on second and 12, I didn't want to take that drag underneath because I feel like a linebacker is just going to jump to the ball and make a crazy interception. But now we're only getting a field goal. Thankfully, our defense would stop the Broncos. So we have the ball back at this point in the game. We need to slide. But until that clock hits zero, I am not going to feel confident that we have this win in the bag. And that's not going for more than a few yards. At some point, the Broncos are going to have to start taking timeouts versus us. And that's about to happen because we're one first down away from being able to seal the game. So even if the Heisman candidate's been getting clamped, we only need a little bit more. And on third and three, it is risky to pass the ball here, but that's what we did. And then Jalen Milrow just ran around for the first. We have sealed the quarterfinal win without committing any turnovers. And it was much closer than I would have liked, but I'll take it because now we can focus on our semifinal opponent. And that's going to be either Penn State or Clemson. The Nittany Lions haven't lost a single game this season, but Clemson's going to run out the clock in the end to beat them by four points. So we're facing the Tigers for a spot in the championship and it's going to be difficult to not turn it over versus them, especially since it's raining. And we'll see how this one goes. I'd like to keep it on the ground as much as possible in this game, but if they're going to stop the run, we're going to have no choice but to pass. And I just hit that last second ties a bond for a massive gain and he broke multiple tackles. I was afraid that that zone might stick with him, but we're going up the middle again to him. And with just two plays to the same guy, we've scored a touchdown. Our defense would also stop the Tigers, which is nice to see, but Jam Miller can't go anywhere. And of all the teams we've played, they've had the best defense for the option run, forcing a third and 23 that's going to be almost impossible to pick up, and we're going to try to scramble for it with Milrow, but that's a long shot. Unfortunately, that would lead to the Tigers scoring a touchdown, but it's not the end of the world. We're going to pick up the second and five to Kobe Prentice. And for whatever reason, he had to run backwards, but they have pressed us, and Isaiah Bond is going to beat the press. He is going to be the best receiver we have had in the playoffs yet, because nobody's really had a stand out game until now and we've gotten the ball in a pretty rough position but I am sensing the blitz with their man-to-man -man coverage as a combination meaning there is not anybody on this left side of the field we're going to take full advantage of that on the play and I wish Jalen Milrow could have taken that one to the crib himself for like a 94 yard touchdown run but we can still end the first half by scoring a touchdown and running out the rest of the clock on them so that would be super nice if it's done right we're picking up this first but Jalen Milrow is getting gassed and they're going to send a blitz so we're going to Kendrick Law whatever happens here we cannot fumble the ball on the goal line and we have to take a timeout to give our quarterback a breather because I want to try and run it in with him which should have worked on this play and it does. Now Clemson would begin the third quarter by scoring a touchdown on us but they missed the extra point so that makes up for the extra point that our kicker missed early on and on third and four we have gotten the four verticals play call so you know where I wanted to go but I wasn't willing to risk it. We are going to run around with Milrow and we're not committing that turnover. I am confident that we can win this game without doing any of it. We can get another eight but from here on out we have got to run the ball and Richard Young's going to find the open space in the defense. Ours would also stop the Tigers, so we are in a great position with a few minutes left. And our offense hasn't had to be as flashy as it was during the regular season, but that's not a problem. Jalen Milrow just had a massive juke play for the touchdown, and that is a great way to seal our spot in the championship. After losing it last season to Texas, he's determined to get one this year, and he'll be facing either Kansas or Ohio State. I think it would be cool to play the Jayhawks plus their 10 seed, but the game went to overtime, and if they don't pick up this 4th and 12, it's all over, so that's unfortunate. Now it's going to be Alabama versus Ohio State for the next.
national championship and the Buckeyes have the number one defense, but they're facing off against the Heisman winner. So hopefully we can go out and beat them. Ideally, just like against the Tigers, we want to keep this ball on the ground versus them. And I'm not sure if their read option defense is going to be as good as Clemson's was because we've already gashed them multiple times and that's another first. They've not stopped us this entire way down the field, but now we have to try mixing in a pass and that's going to be knocked away. To be honest, it should have been picked, but it wasn't. So it's third and goal where we're just going to run with Jalen Milrow and that's a tutty. It only took them a minute or two to respond back. So that's a little bit worrisome, but I've been enjoying putting up running back numbers with Jalen Milrow. And he's also second in the country in passing yards, which is what makes everything so crazy. We really need to mix in a pass because we haven't been doing much of that, but everybody got boxed up besides the slant. And I cannot believe that we have not fumbled on some of these runs, but there is an open lane for Jalen Milrow. He just needs a block or two. And I don't know if he's going to be able to outrun everybody, but it was only because he's so tired. And that's why it's a good thing that we've reached the end of the first quarter. He had a chance to get a little bit of rest so he can take this next handoff for another five or six. And if the Buckeyes can't stop this, there's no reason we shouldn't continue to run the ball. I mean, they're continuing to score on our defense, so we almost have no choice. I don't want to do this, but we're going to have to try and hit this bounce route to Isaiah Bond. And those are always so risky, but it's going to pay off for us. Jalen Milrow's running for another 20, and we'll see if this is the final drive of the first half, which it should be after they tackled us in bounds, and that's a touchdown or not. Isaiah Bond just dropped the ball, so we have to find a way to get in on third and goal, and our tight end is open. Dupree gets in, and that is exactly what we needed in that situation. To start the third quarter, Ohio State finally didn't score a touchdown as they were only able to get a field goal. Now we're finding Ja'Cory Brooks on the wheel route, and there's not many people near him, which is why he was able to get all the way to the 15, and there's multiple players trying to stop Jalen Milrow, but he just keeps on getting big gains, and we're going to score again. It is so needed since Ohio State refuses to stop reaching the end zone. He's going to juke out three different players there. That was one of the cleanest ones he's had all year, and I wish 87 would just block number one, but we're going to have to make it to the end zone ourselves. And I was about to lose my voice because of how crazy of a play that was. I mean, if you watch it back, you are going to see three different players get set in the wrong direction. And this is where the Alabama defense needs to stop Kyle McCord. I don't know why he's black, but they're choosing to punt it on fourth and 22, which gives us the ball back up by two possessions. And I think that will pretty much seal the game. It's been nice not turning the ball over at all. And they haven't been able to stop the run up to this point. So I doubt they're going to figure it out in this scenario. Jalen Milrow might have another breakaway one. And he's rushed for 226 yards in this championship. But Ohio State's got three timeouts. So to officially win, we need at least one more first down. And Jam Miller actually got it on this play. So that's pretty much it. But even if I'm risking turning it over with Jalen Milrow, I want to go for at least one more highlight play. And that was a great juke move. But we have got to reach the end zone with him. And I'm not going to be risky by passing the ball. I probably should slide. But every time I say it, I don't. So we're just going to keep running around. And there's his fifth touchdown. I got to say, playing the rest of his career was a blast. And he's going to finish it off by winning a national championship with Alabama. So we've completed all of the challenges in this video. And these rushing totals at the end of the year are insane. Milrow would go as the first pick to the Chicago Bears. And if there's any other player careers that you want to see on the channel, make sure to let me know in the comments, but also make sure to check out some of my other content.